Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is August the 2nd, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> now let me just give a couple of stories and then let's talk boxing. You know, when I was a kid, when I was younger, there was the best running back of my life, right? Now, Jim Brown's before me. I saw OJ in the 70s. Back then, people were still following Walter Payton. I saw those guys. I also knew that this guy, the new guy, was the best guy I had seen at the position. His first year, he rushed for over 1,800 yards, I believe. He was running behind an excellent offensive line with guys like Jackie Slater on it. He was the show. Now understand, back then, we didn't have all the sports media we have now. So you would just see him on the highlights and you understood the speed, the vision. There was him and then there was everyone else. So his second year, he proved it to you. He set the record, 2,105 yards. I'm talking about Eric Dickerson, right? I'm just telling you, if the guy stays with the Rams, running behind that offensive line, the record book would be unrecognizable today. Right? Unrecognizable. Understand, you knew Dickerson was special when he was in college, when he was part of the Pony Express, right? SMU got in trouble, people might remember, right? Craig James, Eric Dickerson, SMU apparently was paying players. So then there's the game where they played the number one team in the country. This is how crazy the early 80s were, right? A team that was busted, was, paying, was playing the top team in the country, and that team could not stop Eric Dickerson. SMU beat them up. I believe the team was Texas or some team like that. So in the pros, nobody stopped Eric Dickerson his first two years in the league, except Ram ownership. Players back then didn't get paid like they get paid today. Dickerson wanted the big contract. <clears throat> he was young. The problem with being young is you make mistakes. Now, I'm not saying Ram ownership was the best. I'm not saying that at all. But here you are, the starting running back in Los Angeles. Right? Understand. Back then, I know L.A. is kind of hit or miss on football, but everyone knew about the Rams, right? The Rams had a history, right? Fearsome, foursome, you know, you would watch the Rams. You always had these former Rams who were commenting on Ram games. The Rams were a culture. And you know the rest. Dickerson decided that he was going to give all that up. He demanded a trade, was never the same, right? He went to the Colts, he put up great numbers, he's in the Hall of Fame, right? But understand, with the Rams, Dickerson could have fallen out of bed and gotten 1,800 rushing yards, right? People don't realize this was a back who could run between the tackles all day if he wanted to. Barry Sanders... Not so much. The Rams didn't operate a run-and-shoot offense. There was nothing gimmicky about it. Dickerson's talent was such that he was able to gain a lot of yards with Dieter Brock as his quarterback. Well, let's talk about another athlete who made a huge mistake. And it's recent. It's current. It's happening now. You know, here in the Bay... <clears throat> The Golden State Warriors understood they were revolutionary. 
right? Completely revolutionary. They were hitting threes. They changed the game. The secret was one of the best shooting backcourts in history. Right, so they win the NBA championship. They come back. They set the record for the most wins in the regular season. Only to have LeBron James and company beat them. Right? There was disarray out here. They needed some big man who had ball handling skills, who could hit jumpers, who could stretch that defense even further. They needed a little bit better than Harrison Barnes, who they had at the position at the time. So the guys went to the Hamptons and they met with Kevin Durant. And KD, who had been playing with Russell Westbrook, right, didn't have the ball as much as he wanted to. Didn't have the opportunity for last-minute shots. KD joined the Warriors. So the next two years, the Warriors not only make the finals, but Kevin Durant is the finals MVP. Think about that. Now, sometimes you pick life, sometimes life picks you. Right? Sometimes you're born into a family. Sometimes a family picks you. Now, I don't know how crazy it was in the locker room. I don't know whether Kevin Durant fully understood how grateful Warrior fans were for his presence, right? Understand, his banner hangs in the rafters right now with the Warriors, right? Ownership loved him. I can tell you, I hit sports bars in the Bay Area. KD was loved. Didn't seem to know it. Was on Twitter using fake accounts and some other stuff. Well, he left. He's in Jersey. Excuse me, Brooklyn. <laughs> All right. He's in Brooklyn with the Nets. Do you think he's ever going to play again with a backcourt as talented as Curry and Clay? I don't. Do you think he's ever going to be on a team again? where when they decide to guard guys out on the perimeter, rather than them just focusing on him, they have to think, whoa, Clay's gonna kill us. Steph is gonna kill us. Right, understand who the Warriors are. Understand the ownership of the Warriors. That last year, they wanted the ring. They went out and got DeMarcus Cousins. A lot of owners wouldn't do that. A lot of owners would say, hey, we've been good enough. What more do the fans want? We have several recent titles. With the Warriors, that wasn't enough. Well, let's talk about a third athlete, and he's a boxer. In my pre-fight video for the upcoming Mike Tyson, Roy Jones fight, I suggested that Tyson seriously consider contacting Kevin Rooney, who had sued him in the past. I know Rooney sued him one millions of dollars against Tyson, right, for a wrongful termination. I suggested Tyson contact him. I suggested Tyson contact Teddy Atlas. Understand, I know there are years of Teddy saying, less than complimentary things about Mike Tyson, <laughs> right? publicly. I'm fully aware of that. I'm aware of the fact that Tyson approached him, you know, put his hand on his back, uh, tried to reconcile with Teddy, and apparently the next time Teddy contacted him, it was to invite Tyson to some celebrity fundraiser. Right, hey, life's complicated. Let's be adults here. I'm not saying that everything is rosy between Tyson and Kevin Rooney. I'm not saying that everything's rosy between Tyson 
and Teddy Atlas. But here's what I know with certainty, having watched the thing play out in real time. The biggest mistake Mike Tyson made in his professional career was getting rid of Kevin Rooney as his trainer. Right? Understand, this is the Derek Dickerson situation. You looked at power, uh, you looked at Tyson and you thought, my God, this is a paradigm shift. You saw Tyson just plow through everyone. Then he hits the big time. And he beats guys like Larry Holmes. You saw the head movement. You saw the upper body movement. You saw the spacing. And you understood, my goodness, this guy might reign for the next decade, decade and a half. Let me also say that you saw the authenticity Right, this is something you can't fake. Kevin Rooney actually had Mike Tyson's personality. The two guys would show up. It would be a big fight. It'd be on TV. Tyson, Trevor, Burbeck, or whoever. And for whatever reason, Rooney and Tyson had the same facial expression on their face. Right, neither guy looked phased by the crowd. You, you would have thought Tyson was headed to a sparring session. Right? The guys would enter the ring. You know, Tyson's corner was all business. Tyson was old school. Black trunks, black shoes, couldn't see his socks. Right? This was in a Ray Leonard, guys wearing tassels on their sneakers era. When you thought of Tyson, you thought of his entire team. Well, let me just say, in an earlier generation, Ali had an argument with Angelo Dundee, who also trained Jimmy Ellis. So Ali was going to fight Jimmy Ellis and Dundee, his trainer. Right? And keep in mind, Ali had been heavyweight champ, had beaten Listen and stuff. His trainer came to him and said, I'm going to be in Ellis' corner. Jimmy's paying me... <laughs> Jimmy's paying me more for this fight than you've offered. So Ali let Dundee be in Jimmy Ellis's corner. Look it up historically. The Ali Ellis fight, Dundee's in the other corner. Well, after Ali beats Ellis, there was never a doubt in Ali's mind who his trainer was for his next fight. He understood. Angelo Dundee's my guy. Later, Ray Leonard would understand. Angelo Dundee is my guy. Right now, Mike Tyson, like Eric Dickerson, was too young. Others got in his ear. Maybe he thought, hey, I'm black. I need a black corner. Right? Maybe he thought, hey, this is rough imagery. I'm Brooklyn. What am I doing? with, you know, guys I train with in the cat skills and big fights, aren't young black kids looking and saying, hey, Mike, come on, I thought you were one of us. I thought you were Brooklyn all the way. Right? You know what? The minute a fighter starts thinking that for show stuff, right? The minute it's about things other than how effective am I in the ring? When it comes to championship boxing, fighters are making a mistake. So, you know the rest. Mike Tyson's defense starts to deteriorate. Look at the Buster Douglas fight. Mike Tyson has a swollen eye. His corner doesn't even have an end swell. This is the corner for the heavyweight champion. Right? If Tyson's honest with himself, and let me say this about KD, if KD is honest with himself a couple years from now, 
when he realizes that he left a show that had he stayed even with LeBron joining the Lakers Paul George and Kawhi joining the Clippers the Warriors would have been in the mix I'm not sure quite frankly if anybody other than diehard Sixer and Raptor fans would have been watching Eastern Conference basketball if KD was still in the West well let me just say this about Mike Tyson his defense starts to go he didn't have anybody in his corner from way back who could say to him hey Mike I know you're a multimillionaire now but we got to do some road work right hey Mike enough of the endorsements let's get ready for this fight the reason you're Mike Tyson is because of what you've done in the ring so I know they're bruised egos I know it didn't end well. I know there was a multi-million dollar lawsuit. But now that Tyson's in his 50s, as he looks back on his life, he needs to be honest with himself. Just like Eric Dickerson needed to be honest with himself. By the way, for those keeping track, Eric Dickerson shows up for RAM practices. <laughs> he got into an argument with Jeff Fisher when Fisher was the head coach of the Rams. And Eric, according to the legend, said to him, Jeff, you could get fired. I'll always be with the Rams. <laughs> right? Dickerson knows his time with the Rams framed his career. If Mike Tyson is true to himself, he'll realize that his time with Kevin Rooney, who I understand is suffering from dementia right now, but his time with Kevin Rooney framed his career right at the time you're young you're in your 20s promoters throwing a lot of money at you people are saying hey get a corner that looks this way and stuff like that at the time I'm sure all of that made sense now that Tyson's looking at the other guys in the heavyweight division who've been prominent since then the Lennox Lewis's of the world the Vladimir Klitschko's of the world by the way both Lewis and Klitschko thrived under Emmanuel Stewart. <laughs> think about it, right? You think Lennox Lewis was ever going to not have Emmanuel Stewart in his corner once those guys hooked up? Right? Tyson has to realize he left some game on the table. He has to realize that if Kevin Rooney was in his corner, the corner would have had more than a balloon when his eye swelled up against Buster Douglas. Tyson has to realize that his defense has slipped. Right? That he's getting hit with shots that he never got hit with in his youth because of his upper body movement and the way he bent his body. Right? So yeah, life is sloppy. But if I'm Mike Tyson, I certainly would invite Teddy Atlas to walk in the ring. And yes, I would invite Kevin Rooney if Rooney isn't physically able to do so. Then I would certainly be mentioning Kevin Rooney in interviews with the press before the fight. So everyone understood that Kevin Rooney was there in spirit. So everyone understood then Mike Tyson understands what he lost when he lost Kevin Rooney as his trainer. Folks, that's a monumental loss. If you're an old timer, you remember Tyson's corner <laughs> coming in the ring, looking like they were in a hurry, looking like they were trying to catch a bus or something. And you remember the airiness of it all. Right? It was like Tyson always fought some guy who came in with a flowing robe and stuff like that. And here's Mike, and it was strictly business. Strictly business. Right? Fans sensed the authenticity in that. That could have been Mike Tyson's image his entire career. It was not. Right? Whether it was fun or not 
Tyson had to realize that this was his destiny. This was his family. This is where he excelled. Right? I'll just say this too, in closing, about Ali. Frankie Carbo, a name you need to Google, and some others were under congressional investigation in the early 1960s for fixing fights. Right? The mob infiltration in boxing was under heavy scrutiny. Back then, Robert F. Kennedy was the Attorney General of the United States, and he was going after anything that he thought had mob connections. So people like Jimmy Hoffa were in front of Congress and stuff like that, right? So Frankie Carbo actually ends up in prison. And people were looking at boxer Sonny Liston at one point, actually testifies in front of Congress. So here you have an Olympic gold medalist, right? Ali wins the gold at the Rome Olympics. And while he's hanging out, literally hanging out, with Malcolm X and Sam Cooke, right? Two revolutionary type guys, both two of my favorite people, right? He has an Italian trainer, Angelo Dundee, right? Even with all this, I'll call it anti-Italian hysteria of the early 1960s, Ali, Olympic gold medalist, understood. Wow, do I have it good. <laughs> you know, my trainer's the man. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you have to be Italian to be a great trainer. All I'm saying is, when you have a good trainer, right, whatever ethnicity he is, Right? Whatever situation he is. Joe Lewis's trainer was an ex-con. People need to look that up. Whatever the guy's situation. When you have a trainer who's helping your game. You can't lose him. Mike Tyson lost his. And ended up losing fights. Quite frankly, ended up losing some skills. That he had. It hurt him. If Tyson realizes it, I hope he opens the door to bring in some customado people into his ring walk or his pre-fight comments. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me thank everyone here for the comments to that pre-fight video. Please feel free to leave your comments to this video. Let me know what you think. Thanks for stopping by.